All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Houston Rockets Daily. My name is Jackson. I post daily Rockets content, so hit that like button, hit that sub button. I'm posting a video here. We got the microphone. We got it all here. Obviously, if you guys like this video, hit the like button, hit that sub button. We're going to talk about Cam Whitmore, as he, about an hour ago, was just announced the Summer League MVP. Three, four hours from the time of this recording, these Rocks will be playing the Cleveland Cavaliers in the Summer League Championship. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be a fun game to watch. And we're going to talk about Cam Whitmore and his future this upcoming season with the Houston Rockets. One of the reasons I'm talking about this today, obviously he just won Summer League MVP. Uh, on my show today, on my daily live NBA show today, we were talking about Cam Whitmore because my buddy Ciro that I do the show with is in Summer League right now. And he was saying he's been talking to a lot of people, a lot of teams around the league who really were concerned with Cam Whitmore and his legs. All right. They're real medical concerns. Now, personally, the reason why Cam Whitmore fell to 20, it honestly does kind of make a difference if it is actual injury concerns or if it's character concerns or he just didn't have a good workout or like there's, you know, vaping rumors, whatever it is. If it is medical reasons, you know, that is the, the most unfortunate uh, of the bunch. However, the reason we were talking about Cam Whitmore be, was because this kid just turned 19 like a week and a half ago, you know, right after our first summer league game. And the thing is, we have so many new free agent additions, but we took Cam Whitmore at 20. So if we took Cam at four, things would be a little bit different. Right, things will be a little bit different, but we took Amon Thompson at pick number four. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button. I'm gonna try and do these every single day. If you guys didn't know, I have a daily live, pretty much Rockets podcast that we do on this YouTube channel. It's called Let's Talk Rockets. I'm live almost every single day. There's an Apple link down below if you want to listen to it on there. There's a Spotify link down below if you want to listen there. Uh, but I realized like, oh shoot, man, I haven't made like a normal video like this in way too long. We've just been doing live streams, live streams, live streams. So let's just do a little bit of both. If you like the pods, watch the pods, listen to the pods. If you like the videos, watch the videos. So the Cam Whitmore thing is this, if Cam Whitmore was actually taken at pick number four like we were just discussing, well, he'd be killing it still. And the hype would be so high, expectations would be a little bit different this upcoming season and what to expect would be a little bit different. But nonetheless, through five summer league games, Cam Whitmore is averaging 20.4 points per game, 5.6 rebounds, 2.2 assists, three steals, which is a great number, and 55% true shooting. He's the youngest player and one of two 19-year-olds averaging 20 in the summer league. So Cam Whitmore's a great basketball player, man. He's extremely young, he's extremely raw. But when we take a look at the Houston Rockets rotation, specifically where Mr. Cam Whitmore would be playing, I think he'll be pretty interchangeable at three or four. But as far as the depth chart goes, I think he is somewhere with you know, whether Tari's gonna be at the four or the three, or Jay Sean Tate's gonna be at the three or the four. You know, I think Tari's job is, is pretty much locked up as it should be. Um, I think Jay Sean Tate really is the only potential camp battle that we're gonna be watching in, or, you know, reading about and looking at in two months when the Rockets enter camps up. You know, we're looking at Fred as point guard one, we're looking at Amon as point guard two. We're looking at Jalen Green at two, Kevin Porter Jr. right behind him. And then we're looking at Dylan Brooks and then, you know, Jay Sean Tate or, and then Jabari Smith Jr. or Tari Eason. You could flip Tari and Tate there depending. And then we have Shangoon and Londale at the big man position as the starting and bench guy. So that's 10 players right there, including Jay Sean Tate. You know, obviously when we get into guys like Aaron Holiday, you know, different positions, so it's not gonna impact um, Cam Whitmore positionally. But, you know, if Aaron Holiday is getting 15 minutes a night, um, you know, that's 15 minutes a night that, you know, Cam Whitmore won't be playing. So I think realistically, we've learned a couple of things. And when Summer League is officially over, I'll do a whole video, I'll do a whole podcast, whatever it is on, you know, takeaways and stuff like that. But what we're seeing from Cam right now is essentially exactly what we knew coming out of Villanova as far as his, his play style goes. You know, this is an athlete. 
he can play make for himself. He's a great scorer. He can shoot, obviously, but at the same time, he's great off ball, by the way, like phenomenal cutter, phenomenal cutter, great off ball. But, you know, the downsides, the weaknesses are exactly what we saw at Nova last year, right? Shot selection, um, sometimes a little hesitant to pass, so just kind of decision-making going on there. Um, you know, we've seen like a maybe two games of, you know, the inefficient shooting, but keep in mind this guy's being told to take a bunch of shots. You know, they want the ball in his hands. Took him a while to get going. Didn't see too many touches in the first half until the end of it. Um, what was that, last night? Yeah, that was last night. Wow. Was a whole day ago last night's win wow realistically here's the answer cam whitmore uh, next season given the fact that he was selected at 20 given the fact that there's guys like tari eason and jay sean tate ahead of him is it possible he starts a season on the roster 100 is it possible he gets some minutes to start the season 100 what i think we're gonna see more so i don't think we're going to see him start the year off in the G League. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he had a couple of stints in the G League, maybe when we were fully healthy, like you know when we're feeling healthy. Um, so like the start of the season. But I, I really think uh, the most likely route is going to be what Josh Christopher did in his rookie season where he played 73 games, you know, basically selected right where Cam Whitmore was at in the basically early 20s, right, Josh Christopher a couple of years ago. The play, he played 73 games, but he averaged nine minutes a night. But the first half and the second half splits, as far as minutes go, are completely different. Josh Christopher barely playing, you know, two minutes of garbage time, maybe the first two minutes of the fourth quarter to start off the season, and then, you know, a bigger role as the season progresses. Um, that's what I think we'll see from Cam Whitmore. We'll see him play a decent amount of games in the first half of the season. It's going to be very small minutes, and how he plays is going to impact you know, his minute total. Um, but as far as the G League goes, we'll wait and see what our official roster is going to be in a couple of months from now when we get into camps. You know, obviously, we're going to go through camp. We're going to go through preseason. And then we'll have more of a firm idea of Cam Whitmore. So now, you know, the next two months, the next three months, kind of unfortunately, are going to be just speculation and a bunch of hypotheticals when talking about cam whitmore um but he's done a phenomenal job obviously winning summer league mvp and i i really could see it going a multitude of different ways i wouldn't be shocked if he had 15 minutes to start the season or if he started in the g league you know what i'm saying like it's just it's kind of hard right now to predict that thing jay sean tate was brought or not traded rather brought in for a reason brought back for a reason he was not traded and Ime Udoka sees something in there. Uh, we've seen a couple of hiccups with Cam Whitmore defensively, but some things I would notice uh, may, maybe tonight, but more so when the season starts is, you know, just defensive hiccups, shot selection and passing. You know, if he just plays like a team player, if he accepts his role and does whatever Ime asks him to do, he'll see playing time. So uh, the good news is, like I said, he just turned 19 and the Rockets are in no rush and he was selected at pick number 20. So uh, that changed his expectations. You know, he's not a lottery pick. So I said for today, guys, but more importantly, let me know, what do you think Cam Whitmore starting off the season and just the season in general is going to be like in his rookie year with the Houston Rockets? As always, like button, sub button for Daily Rockets content. Um, you know, probably won't do a podcast tonight because I think the game's on at like nine o'clock my time. So it'll end a little bit late, but stay tuned for a podcast tomorrow, Spotify, Apple podcasts, the links to those are down below. We're at a hundred total listens just a couple weeks in. So appreciate you guys so much. And that's it.